Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on multiple regression. As this is the first lecture I've done on multiple regression, I'm going to uh, stick with a very simple multiple regression where we just have two explanatory variables instead of having many explanatory variables. All right, so just as a reminder, our simple linear regression model is this model right here, where we have a response variable for an observation i that's assumed to be independent and normally distributed. The mean of that observation is beta naught plus beta one times the explanatory variable for that observation. And the variance around this mean is constant at sigma squared. This model is called a simple linear regression model because we only have one explanatory variable. We can expand this model to have an arbitrary number of explanatory variables, and we call this the multiple regression model. So now we still have that the response for an observation is independently distributed normally with a mean that's still an intercept beta naught plus beta one times an explanatory variable but now we have a whole set of explanatory variables so the dot 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 here represents beta two times xi two plus beta three times xi three and so forth on up to uh, the pth explanatory variable where we have beta p times xip so just to be clear, this subscript notation says, all right, what's the first value for the explanatory variable for observation i? All right, so what's the first explanatory variable for that observation? This one up here is what's the pth explanatory variable for that observation. All right, so just like I said, so yi is the response for observation i, and xip is the pth explanatory variable for observation i. All right, so this allows us to have a number of explanatory variables that all help in telling us about the mean of the response. But notice here that the variance has still, uh, is still constant after we've accounted for this mean structure right here. All right, so I'm going to go immediately to an example. Well, actually, I guess before I get to an example, I'm going to talk about the interpretation of the parameters and quantities for this model. So uh, the interpretation changes slightly from our interpretation for simple linear regression. What we have now is that the interpretation of the intercept is that the expected value of the response or the mean value of the response when all explanatory variables are zero. In simple linear regression, we only had one. So the statement was when that explanatory variable is zero. Now that we have lots of explanatory variables, we have to say, what if these were all zero? What if these x's were all zero? If they were all zero, this part would disappear, and we'd be left with just beta naught as the expected value or the mean of our response y. The interpretation then for any of the coefficients, so we call these beta 1 up to beta p the coefficients for the explanatory variables, uh, the interpretation now is, for instance, the interpretation for beta 1 is, when all other explanatory variables are held constant, so that is when xi2 and xi3 and xi4 all the way up to xip, when all of those are held constant, then beta1 is the expected increase in y for a unit increase in the explanatory variable xi1. So the key thing now is that we have to hold all other explanatory variables constant. And that's the interpretation of these coefficients. Finally, we have an interpretation for r squared, which is very similar to the interpretation we had before. Here now, we have a more complicated model, so we just say that r squared is the proportion of the variance in the response explained by the model as a whole. All right, so let's get into an example so we can see how this interpretation works. All right, so here's an example, and I've attributed to the website that I uh, pulled it from. Uh, we have the dependent variable, or the response, being the number of long-nosed days. This is a kind of uh, fish, I understand, uh, that's in a stream. And we might think that there are a number of explanatory variables, called independent variables here, that uh, determine how abundant the long-nosed days will be in the stream. So variables that we might think are important are uh, the area drained by the stream, the dissolved oxygen, the maximum depth of the stream, the nitrogen concentration, the sulfate concentration, the water temperature, and so forth. 
For the purposes of uh, this mini lecture right here, we're going to simplify it and only consider two of the possible explanatory variables. So we're going to consider this model right here where the p should be a 2. All right, so this model says um, that we have only two explanatory variables. And so the yi here is going to be the count of the long nose days in stream i. xi1 is going to be the maximum depth in centimeters of stream i. And xi2 is going to be the nitrate concentration uh, in milligrams per liter in that stream. All right, so we're simplifying the problem so far to only incorporate these two possible explanatory variables. <clears throat> All right, so we can use SAS to estimate the parameters. Uh, before we get there, we're going to look at uh, some a couple of exploratory plots. These uh, are plots of, in both cases, the response variable versus our individual explanatory variables. So these are the type of plots that are very informative if you're doing simple linear regression with count as your response and uh, this nitrate concentration as your explanatory variable because then the, the best fitting line here represents the regression. All right, and same over here if we were gonna do a simple linear regression with count as a response and maximum depth as the explanatory variable. But we're no longer doing the simple linear regression, we're doing multiple uh, regression. And in this case, it's uh, harder to visualize what's going on in uh, using these three different variables, that is count, nitrate concentration, and max depth. We'll show some situations within multiple regression where you can actually have good visualizations, uh, but it's not always possible. All right, so as I said, we can fit this model in SAS. Here, we're just using PROC REG. And notice now that uh, relative to simple linear regression, we have a model statement that still has a response on the left-hand side and then an equal sign. And on the right-hand side, now we're going to list all of our explanatory variables. In this case, we're using two, we're using max depth and nitrate concentration. <clears throat> all right, the output looks very similar to what we've seen from simple linear regression. We still get an ANOVA table here. The ANOVA table has an F statistic. This F statistic relates to the hypothesis of whether uh, any of the coefficients for the explanatory variables are non-zero. So that is whether the beta 1, beta 2, up to beta p, are any of them non-zero. We have an R squared here. Again, this R squared represents the proportion of the variability in the response, that is in count that's described by the explanatory variables, max depth, and nitrate concentration combined. The parameter estimates down here are exactly the parameter estimates from the model that was listed a couple pages ago. Here's your estimate for the intercept. Here's your estimate for the coefficient for maximum depth. And finally, this 8.3 is your coefficient for nitrate concentration. Each of these then has their associated standard errors. So this is the standard error. The first one, 15 point, uh, well, about 16 is the standard error for the intercept. 0.18 is the standard error for max depth. And 2.96 is the standard error for nitrate concentration. Finally, over on the right-hand side, here's a uh, p-value for the hypothesis test of whether first the intercept is equal to 0. So that p-value is about 0.28. Whether the coefficient for max depth is 0, which is 0 0.01, and whether the coefficient for nitrate concentration is 0, which is 0 0.007. All right, so now importantly, what we're talking about for this mini lecture is interpretation. So the interpretation for the intercept is when all other explanatory variables are 0, when all explanatory variables are 0. So that is when max depth and nitrate concentration are 0. Then we expect to count minus 18 uh, along those days, which of course uh, is not possible to count a negative number. And so, uh, but it's very clear that also if we had a maximum depth of zero of the stream, then we wouldn't have any long those days anyway. And so this intercept as it is, is not very interpretable because it doesn't correspond to a realistic situation. We can do the trick we did before of centering our explanatory variables in order to get an interpretable intercept, but we're not going to go over that here.
The uh, interpretation for the coefficient for max depth in NO3 is possible. So the interpretation here is that for max depth, so if we're trying to interpret this 0.48 number, the interpretation is if we held nitrate concentration constant, then for each unit increase in maximum depth, in this case maximum depth was measured in centimeters, so for each centimeter increase in max depth, we would expect to count about half uh, another long nose days. Right, so this is expect to count an extra half, and so sometimes we're going to count a bit more and a bit less than that, but on average we'll count about half uh, long nose days more. The interpretation then for the coefficient for NO3, which is 8.3 here, is if we held max depth constant and we increased the nitrate concentration by one milligram per liter, then we would expect to count an extra 8.3 long nose days. All right, so just to reiterate those uh, interpretations, the intercept is the expected count of long nose days when maximum depth and nitrate concentration are both zero. That turned out to be minus 18, which is again not very informative or useful at all in this situation. The coefficient for max depth, which we might call beta 1, is if we hold nitrate concentration constant, each centimeter increase in max depth is associated with an additional 0.4 long nose days counted on average. The coefficient for nitrate concentration, this would be actually beta 2, is that holding maximum depth constant, each milligram per liter increase in nitrate concentration is associated with an additional 8.3 long nose days counted on average. And finally, we have the coefficient of determination that just says the model explains about 19% of the variability in the count of long nose days. All right, so this is a quick introduction in term, into multiple regression and in interpreting the parameters for multiple regression. Uh, in the future, we're going to be talking about uh, other possible explanatory variables. So the one we talked about today was just including additional explanatory variables. Say you might have run the simple linear regression with just max depth, but now in addition to running it with max depth, we're running it with nitrate concentration, so that's adding an additional explanatory variable. Other possible options are to include so-called higher order terms. So this would be things like a quadratic. So if you thought that uh, the response for long nose days to nitrate concentration would increase for a while, but then in decrease after that, you might be inclined to include nitrate concentration squared. An alternative here is to, or not an alternative, but an additional possible explanatory variable, uh, or if you have a categorical explanatory variable like we had in ANOVA. And we'll talk later about how to put that ANOVA model into a regression structure. And that's going to include the incorporation of dummy or indicator variables. And finally, uh, we're going to talk uh, later about adding interactions to the model. Thank you.